In the previous video, we described a program renew whose purpose was to add volume-based pricing to a website. This program includes multiple teams working together. The teams include a team doing updates to the merchandising program and then some business change activities and obviously infrastructure is always included. Let's talk a little bit about those different teams and the approaches that they'll use. The first thing we'll talk about is the web development team. This is where the user will experience the changes and it's going to drive the rest of the development done. There could be several approaches the user interface team takes. Among them would be user-centered design, model-driven design, or RAD prototype. Regardless of which the program product owner and the team decide on, they will probably start with determining what data is involved, what the user wants to do, and then move on to what are the assets that are involved and what changes need to happen. The team will likely start by creating a flow of all the user interface components and begin prototyping. They'll also determine if there are any components that are required on the server side and if there are any changes to the data model that might require having the legacy team or the architects participate. It's very likely that the architect will have passed to them information that the, some of their UI components will need to, to have stubbed responses because the development on the services they'll be addressing may not be complete. It's only with the interaction between the technical architect, the business architect, and the UI team that the user interface will turn out to accomplish its purpose. The technical aspects of development will vary from organization to organization depending on the tools that that organization uses. And the process of managing the work might be Scrum or Kanban or XP or some other development process. They all will rely on having the code reside into a repository management system. And that repository management will be critical to successful rollout. And typically we'll see a managed build and then in some organizations we'll see automated integration testing and automated release management. It's been said there is no Agile without continuous integration. So the closer that we get to a continuous integration, the closer we'll get to true Agile. In our program, we'll need to make changes to the legacy merchandise system. Now prices are downloaded to the website on a daily basis, and there are no options for volume-based pricing. So the merchandising system will have to provide new functionality, new pricing, new price levels, and new price limits to the website. Our legacy system is very complex and we've decided to use a more traditional waterfall approach to making changes to it. So we'll be doing analysis to determine which items are available for price changes, how the volume price changes should be calculated, and what are the discount limits. In design, we'll look at how the calculations will be made, how the information should be provided to the user in their decision-making process, and what changes will be impacting other systems. We'll have to build the updates into the pricing systems and we'll have to create communications to the merchant team for them to understand what we're doing and why it's being done. And then system testing will, will assure that the changes we've made work and that we're prepared to participate in integration testing. Change management initiatives are typically driven from a plan that rely heavily on a list of communication tasks and events that are executed on a regular basis. So Kanban encourages the use of a visual approach to working through that list of tasks. By having somebody with the responsibility to develop those task lists and to flesh out what it means to, to perform each task, Kanban could be a very good tool to administer the business change tasks. Application integration typically starts with an architect looking through the requirements and determining a list of interfaces that will be required, as well as determining the complexity and the time frames that they'll be needed. For a well-known application with well-known data and fairly straightforward interfaces, Kanban is a natural approach to manage those integrations. If the data is less well-known and the integration development will take longer, then the Scrum might be the problem process that the application team uses. Whichever process is used, the interfaces will be built according to the interface specifications created by the technical team, and then the code will be managed into the build and release cycles. 
there are dramatically different infrastructure models in different organizations and teams. If we could assume a continuous delivery pipeline of continuous integration and application release automation, the infrastructure team would be spending its time administering that infrastructure and having very little conversation with the integration development team or the application development team. If the continuous integration pipeline is not in place, then the need for ordering and installing hardware, configuring system software will be required, and that it's typically a much more traditional approach requiring more traditional management. It's been said that if there's no continuous integration, then there is no Agile. And we do know that the closer we get to continuous integration and release, the closer we are to achieving real agility. Thank you for watching. I hope you found something of interest. And if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me.